Hello, welcome to this TTK tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to extend TTK by writing up your own TTK module. If you are an expert in topological and geometrical data analysis, and you are looking for a uh, powerful software platform where you can easily write up your analysis code while not having to care about implementing I.O., efficient mesh data structures or rendering, then we believe TTK may be what you are looking for. So we specifically designed TTK with this purpose in mind, to make it easy for others to write their analysis code and combine it rapidly with advanced TTK or VTK or PowerView components. So here, I will assume that you downloaded and decompressed the TTK source code and data tarballs uh, to the directory TTK here, as you can see. And of course, that you successfully installed TTK. Okay, so now we will move on to uh, the uh, source directory here. And uh, we will create a new uh, TTK module. And for this, we'll enter the uh, sandbox directory. And here we have this directory called dummy branch. We'll go there. And actually, you can replicate as many branches as you want here. And we'll now uh, in this branch, you will have several bash scripts, one to create a project and module, another one to uh, delete it, and another one to release it. So let's try to create a project. So here, you need to specify a name, with the first letter being in uppercase, like hello world. All right, and that's uh, created. So now we can have a look at what's going on here. Okay, so if we have a look at the sandbox subdirectory, you have uh, two classes that have been uh, created. One core class here in the base code directory, and one VTK wrapper for it in the VTK wrapper directory. And we'll start by having a look at this guy. So this class is nothing but a uh, VTK uh, dataset algorithm. So here you may want to put your name, uh, email address, etc. So there's uh, when you design a TTK module, there's several things to do in order. And here you can have a look at these. To do one, for instance. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is to uh, define the number of input ports that you want to have to your filter. So the number of data sets that you want to come to, to get as an input and also define the number of output ports, which is uh, the number of data set that you will provide on the output. So by default, you will get one data set in the input, and you will provide one in the output of the same type. Okay, so next, the next thing that you want to do is to actually specify uh, what type of data you want as an input. And uh, by default, this would be VTK dataset, but you can uh, further uh, specify this if whether or not you want some uh, image data or a structured grid or poly data. Okay. Next, the next thing that you want to do is to also specify uh, what kind of data you want on the output. And by default, you will have a VTK dataset, but you can further specify, for instance, here, I want to have an structured grid on the first port and some image data on the second one. Right. Next, here, uh, you may want to tune some variables. So here, uh, we defined uh, some member variables in the class, some integer variables, double var variables, and also boolean and strings. And uh, those are defined further down, here. Okay. And these macros actually are making these variables accessible to the outside of the filter. This is very uh, standard in the VTK way of doing things. And these variables would be accessible through a uh, PowerView plugin or through uh, command line programs. Okay. And five, there's pretty much nothing to do. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is to really think about what kind of data you take as an input and how many of those and what kind of data you want on it as an output and how many of those. And you also want to tune the parameters that you want to let the user control. 
that's pretty much everything as far as the header is concerned. Next, we'll have a look at the actual wrapping code. So the only thing that you need to implement is this, a do it function. And uh, this function is taking as an input here a vector of BTK data sets and producing on the output a vector of BTK data sets. So those are prelocated for you. So here uh, we'll go ahead and see what this example is doing. In particular, it's doing pretty much nothing. So first, we're retrieving a pointer to a triangulation object, a TTK triangulation object. And then we're passing this uh, triangulation object to uh, the base code class, the core class that will be in charge of the actual processing, the actual pointer. So we'll set up this triangulation. And then the rest of the filter is not doing much. It's just doing a shallow copy, a sort of pointer copy of the input onto the output. And it's creating a new uh, scalar field based on the, um, on the input one, on the output. So for instance, here, we'll try to get a pointer to the input scalar field that is uh, provided uh, by the rest of the framework. And we'll see about this afterwards. And uh, we're trying to allocate some scalar field on the output. OK. And then this part is more important. Uh, which is, this part is uh, common to many uh, wrappers, PTK wrappers for TTK. So here, depending on the type of data of the input scalar field, whether or not it's float, double, integers, whatsoever, we will actually call uh, the processing class here by putting, uh, giving a pointer to the buffer containing the input data and a pointer to the buffer containing the output data. And here, was, what is interesting to see is that this function is templatized because uh, the code um, will have to behave uh, uh, specifically depending on the type. But for the developer, this is kind of transparent. So here you have this VTK macro that automatically sets this VTK underscore TT thing for you. Okay. So basically, this makes sure that the execute function of your core class will be called with the proper uh, type data type here. And that's pretty much it as far as the wrapper is concerned. And I recommend uh, you look at the uh, several examples that are available in TTK to see how to uh, create a filter and how to wrap around it. Okay, so next. Uh, the other thing that we uh, may want to look into is the actual uh, base code class. This is where uh, the uh, actual processing needs to happen. And this class uh, behaves sort of uh, like a functor. It takes a pointer to the input data, do, uh, does the job, and then uh, provide, um, fill some buffer on the output that is provided through a pointer uh, to the output buffer. All right, so if we search for two things here, the first thing that you want to do is to uh, further uh, describe here uh, your preconditions. So TTK is using its own uh, triangulation data structure for efficient mesh reversal. And the way it is designed is that you need to uh, define as a preprocess uh, the precondition somehow the triangulation to let it know what kind of traversal you're going to do after the fact, such that it can adapt. So for instance, if we go uh, to the TDK website and go to the documentation page and pull the TDK developer documentation, which is a documentation generated by uh, DocsyGen, we click on the modules link and then base code and then go to the triangulation class. So let's say we want to access, given a niche of your mesh, all the triangles connected to it. We'll call a function like get edge triangle here. As a matter of fact, in your algorithm, if you want to use such a traversal feature, you will have to make sure that you applied previously, as a precondition, this function onto the triangulation, preprocess edge triangles. 
So here, if we go back to this example, here, um, for the initialization of this uh, core class, uh, as an example, we, pro we um, call this precondition function preprocess vertex neighbors. But here, you want to put uh, the precondition that is adapted to the rest of your algorithm. Okay. And next, here you have a function uh, execute where you want to put some actual processing. So here we're given a pointer to the input and the output, and we have the triangulation that we can access, and here feel free to do whatever you like. So just as a side note here, you will have this variable thread number um, that is defined, um, that is tuned by the user on the command line or in power of you to uh, modify the parallelism of your algorithm. So here, we'll do something very stu stupid. We'll say that the output data should be equal to the opposite of the input data. So basically, we'll modify the input scalar field to uh, be the negative of itself. And we'll put some uh, message here. Right, and there we go. So here we have a very uh, simple example that just compute the opposite of a function and writes this message uh, in the command line. Okay, so now we can uh, close this. All right, and we can actually go to the par view uh, directory. So I will close this and go back here. Go to car view, and you will see that you have several uh, subdirectories. Let's go to the server directory, and here you have a directory called Hello World, where uh, your car view plugin is located. So we'll go there, Hello World. We'll create a uh, build directory. Like this, we'll go in there. We'll call Cynic, and we'll build it. Okay, so now your uh, first GDK module is ready, and let's load it in a power view. So let's open power view, and let's call uh, the uh, plugin manager here, uh, manage plugins. Okay, we will go here, we we'll click on the load new button, and select um, the plugin that we just compiled. Okay. And here, for convenience, you may want to have this uh, module uh, loaded by default next time you open PowerView, so you may want to check this box for this. Okay, so now we'll open some uh, data set. And here, we will go up there and take this data set, for instance, for Dragon. Okay, this data set has no uh, scalar field on it, so uh, we will uh, compute one with the elevation filter, like this. We will actually save it for later use. So we'll save it um, here. Drive on height. And there we go. And now we can actually call our um, Hello World filter by searching it with uh, the search uh, feature of the menu, or you can hit uh, Control Space under Linux to uh, access it real quick. So let's type Hello World, and here is your uh, plugin. Let's type Enter. And here you see that you can play with the variables uh, that we described in, um, in the header of the wrapper, here and there. And here you can play with the actual number of threads uh, for your algorithm. You click on Apply. There we go. 
we have actually here a new function that is the opposite of the previous one. And now you can combine this with further uh, processing. For instance, uh, you can compute some level sets here. Okay. You can compute uh, some TDK things uh, like Cotor plus Studios. All right. Let's put this in transparency. And then you can um, combine this with all the rendering uh, features that you like. In this case, we'll put a cube here, which is not too big. Okay, for the contour that we computed earlier. And we'll set the color uh, to white, which is good. And then for the arts of the country, uh, we'll use some cube 2. Uh, then to this size, pi, and uh, we'll use a different color. Here. And that's it. So here you created your first TTK module and uh, you loaded it in PowerView and combined it with advanced TTK or VTK features. So this is really easy to do. So now if you want to uh, modify your PowerView plugin, you will need to uh, modify this file here that is called hello-world.xml. Let's open it. Okay. And here is the file. So basically, it's uh, describing uh, the kind of uh, data that you take on the input. And it's just calling here the functions that we defined in the VTK wrapper. Okay. So I will refer you to uh, the actual official part of your documentation to uh, further know the details about the specification of this XML file. So this XML file will have an impact on the GUI components of PowerView on the menu they had on the left uh, to control your plugin. So if you go uh, to the Topology Toolkit web page, uh, you will find some information here, for instance, PowerView plugin how-to. Uh, that will explain to you um, how to design uh, a PowerView uh, plugin. So I recommend you read this. All right. So at this stage, I showed you how to create a TTK module and how to uh, uh, quickly uh, load it into PowerView and combine it with advanced uh, TTK and VTK features. But you may have some uh, very good reasons uh, not to run your code from PowerView. So if so, don't worry, we provide several command line accesses to your TTK code classes. So for instance, we'll go a bit higher in the hierarchy. And here we'll go to the standalone um, uh, directory, and then the hello world uh, directory here. And here we have two subdirectories, cmd and GUI. So if we go to GUI, uh, we create a build directory, we go there, and we um, compile it. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to run CMake. Let's do it. And compile. Okay, so here we just compiled a uh, user interface, a VTK-based user interface that uses your TTK module. Let's uh, go back there and let's try to run it. Hello world GUI. Um, you can provide some input with a dash i option and let's call the TTK data that we created earlier, the dragon height, here, there. And here, by default, you have uh, your TTK 
uh, plugin that has been loaded. And uh, you can see that you have the Scala function, and actually, by default, your TTK module has been applied. Here we can see the message, hello world, uh, that we wrote in the processing class. And here you see that the function is reversed. It goes from uh, low values on top to high values at the bottom. Okay. So sometimes uh, this uh, can be useful to have this such a user interface. Um, when you install TTK, as a matter of fact, you uh, installed several uh, of those um, user interfaces. For instance, we can have a look at the Contour Forest, and uh, we can apply it on the same data here. And there we go. And here we have the Contour Tree of the Dragon. And pretty much like in Paraview, we can trigger uh, the, uh, in the display of the output of your filter by just pressing uh, on your keyboard the numbers. So for instance, if I want to show uh, the output number 2, I need to press the key 2 of the, of the keyboard. And I can put, there's several keystrokes that are implemented. For instance, you can press T for transparency and start to have some tra transparent features but here. I'll remove the surface again, and here you have uh, just uh, uh, the Compto tree. Okay, so if you don't want uh, to use a graphical user interface, this is possible. You can also go to uh, this uh, CMD directory there. And again, you create a build directory. You go to build, CMake, and you compile. So what is important to uh, note here is that if you want to change the actual code of your classes, you need to change uh, this code only once. And uh, every time you will rebuild the command line tools or the Paraview plugins, uh, this will be automatically up to date. The build system is using symbol and links. All right. And here we can call uh, hello world on uh, TTK data dragon height like this. Alright, and we'll see that we uh, created by default some output that is the output of our filter. And we can have a look in part of you to see how it looks. Okay, let's uh, color it by uh, the elevation. And you see that it's indeed uh, the opposite, low values at top and high values at the bottom. Okay. So, once you are happy with your TTK module, you may want to distribute it to others. So for this, we have another Bash script that creates everything for you. So we go higher up the hierarchy. Until here. Okay. The dummy branch. And you have this uh, release project here. So, if you just press enter, you have the different options. So first you need to name the project, the TTK module that you want to release. In our case, this is Hello World, this. And then, optionally, you can uh, specify if you want to release a command line version, a graphical user interface version, or a part of your plugin version. So let's say we want to release all of that. GT. You may want to release some .cgen documentation of your plugin too. And optionally, you may want to anonymize your code. So this is very useful, for instance, if you want to submit a scientific paper for blind review, and you want to provide the code to reproduce your results, which we strongly encourage you to do for the sake of reproducibility of scientific results. So let's do this. And there you go. And automatically, um, the script will parse uh, the different TTK dependencies uh, that your module uh, builds on top of, and we'll put that automatically in the in a release directory. Let's go there. So here you have a release directory, and you have this folder that's been created with some uh, uh, documentation, a default license. Uh, you may want to uh, uh, update this. You may want to put a readme note as well. You may want to provide some data. Once you're finished, 
we actually want to compress this as a tarball, for instance. And that's it. Your tarball is really ready to ship. You can send this to uh, whoever you like. And finally, if you are happy with your TTK module, we'd be very happy to include it in the next release of TTK. So please visit our website and click on the Contribute section, where we have uh, detailed information on how to uh, contribute your code. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.